more to come. So yeah, but for now, uh, let's let's listen to Joanna. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm quite scared actually nowadays because uh, the last panel was awesome, like big, big props to Anya and I actually marketed one of the games which was a uh, competitor for Victoria Free. It was Frostpunk. So I loved, I loved your talk. <laughs> Yay, okay. I did social media for them. Nowadays, as Ricardo said, I'm a freelancer. I've worked in indie devs um, and uh, Double A, which is 11-bit studios. And nowadays, I'm... Um, uh, bit of a huntress and looking for my next project. So I'm not focused much on the studio and I don't have an intro slide, which now I know should have been my slide. Uh, so I'd like to get first into the topic. So pitching games to publishers, both 11-bit studios and Klabata, which is the indie company which I worked for for the past 10 months, are both a publisher and dev. And Klabata as well is a porting house. So we do you know, get the games from, for example, Steam onto consoles, uh, which Anya touched in her speech as well. And these are all the events I've attended over the past two years in person. So some of the Polish ones, like Digital Dragons, Pixel Heaven, some of the international ones, like PAX East and West in the US this year, and um, smaller events straight after COVID, uh, restrictions lifted off in, at EGX, and Gamescom this year, because Gamescom finally came back into physical. Uh, last, uh, two years ago, it was only an... Uh, mixed hybrid event, even though there were no booths in 2020. Um, but all these events enabled some you know, indie devs to be able to pitch games to me. I worked as a marketing manager, later as a marketing PR lead, and all these physical locations enabled teams to come up to us. And even though I've worked in marketing and PR, I'm the gatekeeper a lot of times to projects that happen and you know, teams come up to me and talk whether we are interested in them. So a lot of times, the first key thing that the team tells me is that the game is amazing. And it's an amazing idea, and it's got a brilliant storyline, it's got brilliant gameplay, and stunning visuals. A lot of times, it's due to the team thinking that, and it's not really tested outside of the pitching area, or the presentations then you know, come up to us at the booths at the events, or via email, or via presentations in person. And, you know, whenever you come up to a publisher, you have to have a lot of homework done. A lot of these things are things that the publisher will not necessarily have patience for, for you to figure out during the conversation. So, for example, is the idea actually new that you're, you know, thinking of the project niche? Is it, you know, something that already exists? Does it improve something? Is it, for example, a platformer that's got an innovative jump, you know, um, mechanic that's so unique, there's nothing else on the market, but I playing a lot of games can give you three examples of some other titles which have the same exact mechanic. Or is it, you know, paying homage to a game that you don't mention in your pitch because you're not aware it actually is based on a very old mechanic. Timelines are another very, very big pain point. A lot of times in the presentations that I received personally, because the GDD, for example, is not ready. A lot of the mechanics are still on the table. They are not, you know, timed correctly. They are not budgeted correctly. And teams come up to the publisher to decide. And it's not the way it should be. Um, the core loop is still not decided, for example. That there are things that the team expects us, as indie publishers especially, to give them the motivation, give them the rigor to decide what's important. And that's not our job a lot of times. Um, and also, does your idea rely on aesthetic, art style, audio that you actually budgeted and timelined into the project? Because sometimes the projects are still not finished when they come to our table. How complex it is. I love that Enya touched on it in her speech because this is a very, very big pain point. Uh, some studios and some publishers therefore specialize in consoles, on PCs, on mobiles. Um, a lot of times I got pitches of uh, you know, mobile games when our um, dev team had very strong info on the website that we don't do mobile games. <laughs> and we cannot help you, unfortunately, unless you know, telling you to pitch it to somebody else. Um, what about the markets? How many markets are you targeting? Is it only English release? Have you done voiceover? Are you hiring the actors for the voiceover? Is it finished as well? 
What about the physical releases? Some games still, especially for Nintendo Switch, still have physical releases. And it's such a cool thing to be able to provide that. But a lot of the publishers don't have the specs for that, don't have the necessary you know, experience doing it. Special editions, you know, doing collectibles, doing a big, big announcements as triple A's. Some publishers would not be able to stomach that. And trade events, consumer things, showcasing. Um, my job at Clubata was mainly about showcasing things from other teams, not from our own dev studio, but projects we had uh, scheduled for 2022 this year. So are you comfortable as dev teams to speak at the events? Are you introverts? And there's nothing to change that. Do you need somebody with a strong marketing perspective to come up and do all the dev diaries, represent you, do the press interviews, do the hands-on and on hands of uh, showcases of the game? Because that's important. It costs time. It costs you know um, time allocated under publisher for our own projects and for different titles. What support do you need? Like, do you need the cash? And it's very, very good to be honest about it. Are you independent as teams? Do you need someone to do, you know, the sort of intro for you into the whole niche of gaming that you're gonna do? Or do you need basically someone there in the background for you because you can handle it yourself because you've got a very experienced dev team, you've got your own skill set, or are you newbies because you wanna try gaming and you wanna do a release yourself? And what about marketing? What about PR? Are, you teams, are your teams experienced with doing social media? Do you want to do social media? Because some teams don't want to do it at all. They want to do physical events. They do want to do press releases. They just want to communicate via Steam in case of PC releases. Or, you know, give it everything to the publisher and have the publisher be the facing, you know, person behind it. A lot of times, in our case, we handled all the marketing in Kabata. So we were responsible for getting the word out and giving our faces and beautiful, you know, voices to all the announcements. But a lot of times, dev teams can provide a lot of feedback and a lot of materials themselves. How much freedom do you need at the end of the day? Are you comfortable giving up the IP, giving up the series if it proves to be a financial success? Or do you need just you know, the cash and you can dash with it, so to speak? Um, what's the nature of the financial cut at the end of the project? Are you okay with percentages? Are you okay with a lump sum after the whole release? Or you haven't thought about it and the conversation with a publisher is cut short because your budget is out of the scope for us altogether and you haven't given much of our own releases time to you know, think through it. And who is the one being built in this relationship? Are we as publisher you know, branching into a new niche, a new category of projects, a new platform, and you're the test bunny, so to speak? Or is it for you to gain foot in the industry that we've been part of for a number of years and got projects that, you know, will make sense for our roster of projects? Also, this comes, you know, the nature of the publisher structure and publisher names as well. So I've been part of both indie and double A teams. Uh, in my case of the role at 11-Bit Studios, I wasn't part of the publishing team itself looking for projects. I was part of the social media team marketing the projects we already had or upcoming ones from the studio. In case of Clubata, I was responsible for looking for games, for talking to the teams, and trying to get them on the roster. So, which part of the you know, landscape are you? Are you part of the indie? Are you part of the double A? Are you aspiring to be triple A? But you don't have the cash or the resources to do it. Um, what's the complexity that you expect from a relationship with a publisher? As said before, is it more about mentoring or is it more about getting you know, the whole team involved because you don't have the resources to do it any other way? And do you want to be you know, the golden goose of the publisher or are you okay being one of the many? Because for example, you do puzzlers or platformers that are very, very into what the publisher has done so far. They've got the community, they've got the you know, sentiment of all players, they've got the sentiment of the press contacts as well. Or do you want to be the golden, you know, just the golden goose that you've one hit wonder for the publisher because it's a new territory for them, but they can make a lot of mistakes because of that at the same time.
This is the landscape that I'm aware of, and I'm very happy to, you know, have a bit of a conversation later on if anybody can add to it or, um, uh, you know, talk about it. So we've got Team 17, for example, Raw Fury Thunderful for the double A's, together with 11-bit studios, which I worked at. Uh, Clabata itself and Devolver specialize in indies. Obviously, Devolver is a heavyweight here with loads of titles that came out of nowhere and became instantaneous hits because of the brand um, behind Devolver. Play on Square Enix uh, and 2K are some of the you know, teams responsible for successes of teams that were already great on their own, and they amplified it. So if you're thinking about pitching to a publisher, you have to decide which part of the spectrum do you consider yourself part of. Are you okay that some of these teams specialize in one genre or another? They have press contacts, they have the trade shows remembered, and you know they've great at it. A Clabata was specialized in games based around a good storyline, based around game mechanics. We've got a lot of strategies. Um, in case of 11-bit studios, the team specialized in games that made an impact and were okay with the rest of the portfolio of their own games. So it's very up to you to think through what you expect from the publisher relationship altogether. And, um, you know, there are many ways to reach out to a publisher. As I said, in my case, even though I'm not part of the, you know, technical team, so many a time I was not able to do a technical review of code or a vertical slice. I was the one being approached at, um, you know, in-person live events because loads of teams were looking for a game scout, were looking for a publishing contact, and I was the gatekeeper immediately, you know, telling them, okay, this is out of scope altogether because you've got a budget that's like 10 companies of ours and we're not able to do that at all. Or um, the vision they had was so strict that there was no other place for us to intervene or make the game our own as a publisher. Um, it's also about, you know, very hierarchical structures where there are already game scouts and uh, teams that are specialized in looking for the game itself. Um, a lot of times, the bigger, thing, the bigger firms, you're not able to approach anybody else but the scout because they'll give you a hard no. Uh, sometimes, as was my experience at 11-bit, people approached me on Twitter, Discord, which I was you know, managing for the brand and for the other games. And a lot of times it was about forwarding the request and getting you know, the team to respond via official email or via official channels. Um, it's also important you know, that um, offline events are coming back, but a lot of online events are the heavyweights here, especially with um, you know Gamescom, PC Gamer Show, a lot of um, uh, events around game uh, awards like um, last week, I suppose, and Golden Joystick as well for trailers. So sometimes you can be approached as part of a publisher by teams who hop off that trend, seeing the new releases, and you yourselves as indies can approach them as well. At the end of the day, with all that, a lot of times you've really got to have it all covered on your own and do the homework before approaching someone for a publishing team. A lot of times it's um, that we've got 50 projects per week, uh, 10 projects but a day, for example, for an event, one day at Gamescom, I had seven back-to-back -back meetings when uh, you don't have time, a lot, a lot of times for details, for fine print. And so you gotta make sure that you distill it enough so that a non-technical person can understand where the hook is, where the vertical slice would be at if you have it, or would need to produce it. And um, a lot of the decks that I've seen are not focused you know, on what the publisher would gain. And many times it is about what the gain is to you as a team and to us as a publisher as well. And you know, as part of this, you only got one shot a lot of times. It's unfortunate, but sometimes you know, great ideas can get feedback. And I think that's the main thing that we should, as all you know, business people, come back to, that feedback is important on both sides. We have to understand as publishers what we are capable of and what could be the next opportunity for us and for the teams to build them up. Because sometimes the greatest idea is not present yet in the GDD, but it's there in the game designers had all the marketing teams. 
So, yes, I tried to speed very much through the presentation. So if you want me to come back to anything, let me know. And any questions now will be rewarded with sweets, actually, because I'm from Poland as well. And I've got sweets for questions. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank oh, uh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. So who wants sweets and has something to ask? <laughs> Thank you for, for the presentation and I just wanted to uh, touch the detail you mentioned that you often you were approached through social media channels mm -hmm. and asked to forward requests or, or something to, to ping the teams. Uh, does that work? Uh, I mean, to be honest with you, when I started as part of the community and social media team, I thought the team would ignore such requests because I come from a corporate background and usually that channel would have been ignored. But making games taught me that every channel of communication is great if you're prepared. So if you have, for example, a deck, like a presentation, you've got your timelines you know, figured out, you've got a budget figured out, you know what the publisher does, and you know that this game would fit into the roster of premieres or the genre, yeah, you're gonna get through. Because you know, there are people behind these channels. And you know, in my case, for example, the guys at 11-bit showed me the ropes because uh, I came from corporate background. I worked for Mattel, Amazon, Philips, those sort of companies. And 11-bit studios was my first gaming job. So they really showed me the ropes and they were super patient with me and I, lo I love them forever for it. And they immediately tell, told me, like, if it makes sense, yes, like, forward it, let the team see it. Um, a lot of companies have official, you know, emails or, um, like, forms on the website themselves where they stage the process. Like, during the workshop, I want to talk more in detail with it because Raw Fury or Thunder for all 11 bits have great forms to make the teams think through when they are, you know, not shooting their shot. Because a lot of times you can blew it because... Maybe you won't get blocked, I, I, I wouldn't say that, but then somebody will see the email again and say, oh my God, these are the same guys again, writing the f very, very long email with loads of you know, uh, things attached to it that doesn't make much sense. And it's kind of the first impressions that work uh, a lot at, of times because we are people at the end of the day. Um, the publishing teams usually have a lot on the calendars and a lot of things to do in the meantime. And in case of Clubata, for example, we were porting house, developer, and a publishing house. So, you, you, for example, in my case, I was in charge of two people and the whole marketing team was three people. So, for me, it was going, you know, like, just to get to the point a lot of times of the presentations. But if you want to approach people on Twitter or like the next platform after Twitter, whatever <laughs> happens to it, um, go, go, go for it, but be prepared, like prepare yourself and be able to answer questions on the fly as well. Like what's the budget? What's the timeline for you? What part of the process are you at? Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. What about sweets? <laughs> yeah, I've got them here. Like people will have to like shake my Where hand to get them. Yes. Oh. <laughs> To prove to prove that yeah, they exist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, more, more. Hello. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have a question. Uh, it was interesting part when you said that we should tell uh, in the presentation ten minutes uh, what publisher should get, what value will get as a publisher. So uh, what would be the device to in, uh, include in the pitch deck? Is it like uh, make a kind of publisher's uh, competitive map and to place the product inside their portfolio, how it would fit with the current products? Yeah, or it should be uh, what value, like uh, indirect value? You, or, or I think what you're talking about, like if you mapped like all the already existing catalog of games, like yeah. I would love that. Because that's, you know, that shows that you thought about it, that we're not just a random name that you input, you know, like publishing and put into the form. That would already show, you know, doing a lot of homework. Um, it's, you know, it's knowing the publisher as well. In the case of, you know, just reading through the website as well. Like, do we do mobile games? Like, I've seen... 20 or 30 pitches for mobile games. And we don't do mobile games, we never did them. So it's, it just shows that people, you know, 
get the email address, so for example, of me on LinkedIn, for example, or um, via you know the um, business cards, and they just send it just to get it out, just to like be able to make the move. So if you show like a competitive landscape, like similar games that already are in the catalog for the publisher. Um, is it something that we would be able to do in terms of localization, like all the you know big parts that publishers themselves post as uh, publishing decks? Because, for example, we at Clubata made like a business presentation, and all our skills were in that presentation, and it was publicly available. So, if you made the time to read through it and made sure that your game corresponds to those things that we do well, and it's just a synergy, like it's a no-brainer for us to make an offer for you because you're within the budget, you've seen what games we've done, you've seen what teams we've worked with. It's a pleasure, like, you know, there's, there's just a conversation when we do it. It's not a conversation, you know, going through all the green, nitty gritty detail that's really stressful a lot of time on teams because they don't want to tell how many people are working on a project, how involved are those people, do they have the capabilities they ask for, or do they need to be taken by the hand? And if you do, for example, like a matrix, or what we've done already and where you see your project being a part of this like whole family of games, that's awesome. Like I'd love something like that. So follow up question. Uh, you said, for example, uh, let's say that uh, your publisher, uh, publishing company works with strategy games mm -hmm. and as we as a mobile games saying we're creating publishing game, uh, strategy game and uh, we have a roadmap that in one year if the mobile game is successful, we coming up with a similar game, a bit different name or something, but we have a roadmap in mind. Would like publisher consider this option even though they not they want work don't work with the mobile games but uh the the, the guys have a clear vision and roadmap yeah. and it's kind of lineups with the with the skill set the publisher has so even though you're not working with the mobile games mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're thinking about like doing it on PC, on console. Yeah, like for example, it. in one year or two years, but we have a, for example, we found the niche. I, I, I don't have this, but I sure. supposedly, <laughs> yeah. So w um, in this case, publisher would consider even to start talking or they say, okay, mm -hmm. mobile game is like a, a buzzword or something. Like uh, definitely go. a GGD, like how do the mechanics transform from mobile into like a PC game, like a Steam release? Because a lot of the mobile first games have uh, a core loop of gameplay that's so mobile specific that it'd be very hard to adapt. So that's the first question. Second question I would have, um, if you've not fin finalized that project, what guarantee we would have, or Clabata, because I'm not part of them anymore, would have that you would finalize this project? Like how, you know, you don't, if, have you done similar work as freelancers, for example, for a studio? Have you been part of a you know, whole release process? Um, what are the skill sets of the team behind the project? And um, I think also markets and, other things and what makes you think that the game without being released on mobile will be successful on other platforms immediately? Like, don't you want to do a test run first on mobile and see and learn and then approach the publisher with you know the findings that you have? It could be a conversation, but it'd be hard because you're not coming with an idea that's console or PC first. And that's you know a different a different part of a pair of boots because as I'm saying a lot of the core loops or monetization especially is so unique on mobile that's so hard to adapt to make sense to people and for it to be fun as well like what Anya said like that's super important and how would we schedule the releases as well you know is it on all platforms like Steam and consoles at the same time is it simultaneous is it like Brick by brick, first mobile, then PC, then we're gonna see what comes next. Um, but yeah, it could be a conversation, but as I'm saying, the more things you get figured out when you approach a publisher, the easier the conversation gets, because a lot of times your project may, might get sidelined, or it might be you know, on the pile of things we wanna do, but we're not sure about because it's so new to us, and there are so many things that are unknown about that team, and we're not you know, 100 confidence. The more confidence we can get, the more confidence you'll have in us as well, because it's a mutual relationship. At the end of the day, you know, publishers, in my view at least, and my experience should work so that the developers come back to them time and time again and don't go, you know, on the market looking for somebody else, because that's the, that's the worst 
that can happen. They've got so many different relationships because some things didn't just, you know, communication-wise didn't work out. And so thank you so much. Sure. Appreciate. Yeah, thanks a lot. More questions uh, at the back. Hi, Joanna. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I wanted to ask um, uh, if indie teams approaching you uh, in sense of publishing, um, do you consider investment into development, into game development, or only to marketing and other typical publishing activities? Uh, it depends. As I said, um, I'm not with 11-bit uh, studios or Clubatin anymore. I'm a freelancer, so probably going to look for marketing gigs. But in terms of uh, the publishers I've worked with, um, the conversation is possible for investment. It's, it depends what timeline the project has. Is it at vertical slides? Is it alpha? Is it beta? Is it you know, just before the release and you've got everything figured out, but you just can't handle marketing? because your team cannot, cannot do that. A lot of publishers actually come in at various stages of the process. Some work with the team at the idea stage, and they walk through all of this and handle everything. Um, for example, in case of 11-bit studios, we did marketing you know, for some titles, but at the same time, a lot of the teams decide to be fully independent. And they don't, you know, the publisher just do the physical release or the, you know, budget handling and other things. Uh, in case of Clabata, the projects were, you know, various, but it's an NDA stuff and can't really get into much detail. But it is possible, especially at Gamescom, which, you know, I was part of this year. I was both at the um, B2B and B2C part of the business showcase because we had a game of our own. A lot of teams are looking for initial investment, like just having the team, just having an idea, but having, having you know, the GDD figured out at all, or not having, you know, thought about the core gameplay at all. So it is possible, it just, you know, a, a lot of NFT games came out that way, as I understand. So it just matters, you know, what part of independence you want to keep, because the earlier publisher gets into the project, the more you have to be, you know, as a synergy. Like, it doesn't work out that the team has this vision and nothing will be changeable. No, because there are so many costs already on both sides that it's not, the, the situation is skewed. It's different, for example, if the project is done, everything is done, and you just need social push on Twitter or YouTube or everywhere else. But it's different if the, you need budget to get people hired, for example. And then, you know, the publisher will, will probably want to have a say what kind of people, you know, get under that budget because the budget comes out of the pocket. Like, it's natural, I think, in that sort of relationship. But it's possible, but you still got to get prepared, you know, for the tough questions like why have you not been able to raise the capital yourself? Have you approached other publishers about it? What kind of exclusivity you would give to us? Are you, for example, looking for a series of games? Are you doing a one-hit wonder type of game and therefore needs a big investment, but you believe that your team will be, you know, good enough to get it into an idea that will, you know, give maybe another game soon. Hope this answered your question. Yes, yes, thank you. I'm sorry, um, I have a, uh, a bit of a specific question though, it's quite, difficult to phrase, but I think that uh, you all understand me. Uh, from your experience, uh, let's say you have a situation where the publisher already showed interest in your product. Uh, in general, how courageous, how brave can you allow yourself to be when discussing the budget or uh, the uh, the share cut and so on? For example, um, you want to hire the best celebrity artist for your projects, the uh, the best specialist, you want a great scope, but you are very ready to cut it down. But you are afraid of the situation that the publisher will say, uh, will see this, and they won't even negotiate it. So is there such a risk? Sure. Um, I think it comes back to the question how much research has been done on the publisher themselves, because a lot of times, you know, Clabasa is an indie studio, an indie publisher, so a lot of times we would get offers that I would immediately say to people, that sort of budget is like the Volvo level. 
<laughs> it's not the level of indie publisher, not a boutique publisher. So a lot of times it's up to the team to make, you know, the distinction. Are the is the project viable enough for a big publisher and therefore approach them and ask them for feedback? Or is it an indie release? Because with an indie, apart from, you know, giving some feedback for the presentation, if the budget is like 10 times the budget of a single game, there's no conversation there because it's not about, you know, hiring one or two artists only. It's about the whole scope of the game the team sees feasible. So I think if you make, you know, a list of publishers and go really in depth into what they've done, what kind of games they've had, how big the teams were that they invested in at various stages, it will inform you and save you the tough conversation altogether because maybe you'll decide you won't approach that boutique publisher at all because it's out of scope. Like a lot of times it's not down, you know, to one project per se, I'd say, but it's a whole strategy idea behind being a boutique publisher and being a publisher who can have 10 or 20 releases per year because they finance the other publishing deals. But if it's a very specific publisher, in case, for example, of Klabata, we chose quite niche games. So therefore, each, you know, each uh, iteration, each new project had to make financial you know, sense to us. Whereas a lot of artistic games can be released because there, are, there is a business scope to them. So to answer your questions, this conversation will happen. If not, even enough research will be done. Um, but I try to be nice about it each time. I know a lot of teams don't have uh, that sort of out, you know, how to say it, perspective on it. They immediately say no, and just no, and without, you know, going into much detail, which is unfortunate, but it might happen this way as well. They didn't answer your question at all. Yeah, because, well, I'm just a bit afraid of a situation where uh, the publisher won't even start negotiating Mm -hmm. They will just say, oh, okay, um, no, yeah. Sure. Um, okay, uh, do we have uh, some more? Or we can save them for, for later, <laughs> yeah. uh, for, for tomorrow, who will join us? Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, and we are, we are good with time. Yeah, for the first time, I think we're good with time planning. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, f thanks a lot. Uh, the official. Yeah.